I became blind and deaf before I learned to speak. With the help of several special people, I learned to communicate. I used my communication skills to teach people about blindness. I also fought for the rights of women and workers. I was born in 1880 in Alabama in the USA. When I was 19 months old, I became very sick with meningitis, a disease of the brain. I got better after the illness, but unfortunately I couldn't see or hear anymore. I found it very difficult to learn and I became very angry. I was able to think, but I could not communicate my thoughts. It was a very difficult time for me and for my parents. My mother and father wanted to help me, but they didn't know what to do. Fortunately, I began to communicate with Martha Washington, who was six years old, and the daughter of our cook. We created our own sign language when we played together. I enjoyed learning from Martha, but my mother realized that I needed professional help. In 1886, my mother learned about the work of Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone. He was working on the problems of the deaf. Maybe he could help? Bell told my mother about Perkins School for Blind People, and the school sent a special teacher to our home. Her name was Ann Sullivan. At first, I was a very difficult student, but Ann Sullivan was very kind to me. One day, we were getting water from the well when Anne drew some signs on my hand. I realized that she was writing the word water. I was so excited. Within a few hours, I could read more than 30 different words. At last, I could communicate with other people and they could communicate with me. Anne helped me to escape from my lonely world. When I was eight years old, I went with Anne to the Perkins School for Blind People. At the school, I was excited to discover that there were other children like me. We all learned from our teachers and from each other. I learned to read Braille in English and later in several other languages. In 1894, Anne took me to New York and I studied at several different schools for the blind and deaf. I tried to learn to speak, but it was difficult. My voice worked, but I didn't know how to use it properly. Only Anne and a few other people could understand me when I spoke. I studied hard, and in 1900, I started at university. Anne went with me to every class. She wrote the teacher's words on my hand. In 1904, I became the first deaf and blind person to get a degree. I was so happy and proud and I knew that I wanted to use my communication skills to help other people. At first, I worked with organizations that fought for women's rights. Then, in 1912, I started to work with workers' organizations. I discovered that some types of work made people blind. I wanted people to know about this problem, so I wrote a book in Braille about it. In 1915, I started my own organization. 
Helen Keller International, which still teaches people about blindness. I wanted everyone to know that in many cases, blindness can be prevented. For many years, I traveled around the world and talked to groups of people about blindness. I communicated with Anne. She then spoke my words for me. Our talks became very popular, and sometimes we earned up to $2,000 a week. We gave the money to organizations that helped blind people. When Anne became ill, Polly Thompson became my guide. Unfortunately, in 1936, Anne died. She did so much for me, and I never forgot her. With the help of several special people, I wrote 12 books about my beliefs. I became famous because of the talks and the books. Important people wanted to meet me. I even met the King of England and the President of the USA. Polly Thompson helped me with my work until she became very ill in 1957. After that, Winnie Corbali became my guide and traveled with me to teach people about blindness. Our work was helped by a theater play, The Miracle Worker, about the life of Anne Sullivan. In 1962, it became a popular film. In 1964, I won an important award from the President of the USA for my work. The year after that, my name was added to the list of the most successful women in the USA, the Women's Hall of Fame. The names of my guides, Anne, Polly, and Winnie, should be in that list, too. In 1968, at the end of my life, I remembered Anne, Polly, and Winnie. I felt proud of our work, which helped blind people around the world.